Uh, Coach, Dan Walken, USA Today. Why weren't you guys better this year? <laughs> you know, uh, I think we had our moments. And if you look at our team in different segments, you would say, man, they were good. You know, we remember we started off the ACC um, season five and one. And then I think we had a couple of rough spots. And, you know, it's weird. We, we, we brought in eight different guys. And I think it took a little longer than I thought. We, like, we played well early. And then in between, I thought we were just OK. And then we kind of find our, found our stride once we got into March a little bit. So it's weird. Um, it's a good question. But like I said, we, we had some moments. And, and then we kind of turned it around. But when you look at you know, our 20-game schedule, every game that we lost, probably outside of one or two, we were in it. And what we had to do is we had to clean up some of the things we didn't do well. And obviously, we got better. Yes, go ahead. What What is it? Do you think that in, in the current transfer environment that we might see more teams like yours that don't really get it all together until, you know, the last possible minute? Absolutely. I mean, you think about it. it and and here's, here's a difference in my team last year and this year. We had a bunch of transfers the previous year, but we had an opportunity to play a foreign game, which gave us 10 practices. And when you get those 10 practices, they mean a lot in the summertime. And then to go over and play against some national teams and everything else, I think that really helped that team. Uh, but when you just start, you know, when basketball starts and you got a bunch of new dudes, it, it takes a long time. And especially when it's from your guards. You know, if you got returning guards, I think it makes a lot of difference. But in our situation, we lost to Quavion Smith and Jaquel Joyner, who both you know, that was 34 points a game for us. And so it took us a while to get to where we are. Coach, next question will be on your right by the uh, black curtain. With the Richmond Times Dispatch. Kevin, you've got a center who looks like a left tackle, a point guard who is a lacrosse All-American, a forward who's fasting for Ramadan. Is this as unique a team as you've ever had? And how did it come together? See, B DJ Burns would think he's a tight end. You can't say left tackle. That's not right. You know, um, it, it makes for a great story, and it does. I mean, we, you know, when you look at, you know, teams are in the Sweet 16, you always try to figure out how did they get here. Well, we won. We got here because we're very unique. I want you to think about this. Um, we've got a traditional old school back to the basket post guy who can score. Most teams don't have that. Uh, we're Starting a, a point guard who is a legitimate point guard. Most teams have, you know, kind of a combo guard as we've had in the past. And then we've got a lot of good pieces around it. And, you know, we've got a 6 1 combo guard in DJ Horn who could really scare the, score the basketball. And so I think one of the things that's helped us out is because we're different, it's actually helped us. Like, how, how often are you going to play against a, a post guy that's a lefty with a great touch that can really pass out the double team? And Michael O'Connor has become, you know, a, a scorer. You look at him in the early games, you're like, man, he's just a passer, 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 and his numbers don't support it. Um, you know, give our assistant coaches a lot of credit. I think the development of some of these guys late in the year has really helped us become uh, a good team and, and has gotten, gotten us to this point so far. Okay, here in the middle, left side. Hey, Coach uh, Scott Grodsky, CBS Milwaukee. You mentioned the importance of experience at guards with Marquette. They have two who've been together for three years, and Cam Jones and Tyler Kolek. What kind of a challenge do they present? Man, those guys are really good. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out which one's better. And I know that's not fair to them, but they, they complement each other in, in different ways. And, you know, both uh, get to the left hand is really good and talented and that's a, that's a major challenge for us because in order for us to have success, we've got to do a good job of controlling those guys. And um, they, they play extremely well. They play extremely well together. Um, they're older. They understand they have played together. And that's something that you can't substitute. And so top of our scouting report is those two guys. But when I say that, Marquette is so much more than just the, the guard play. They've got good play all over the floor. Okay, on the front row, left side. Kyle Boone, CBS Sports. Um, you guys lost seven of your last nine regular season games. I think it's fair to say probably on the hot seat entering kind of the postseason. You guys go on a crazy run, five wins, five days of the ACC tournament. What changed for you guys? You know, what changed, it's weird. And, and, and like I told you, it's so many great storylines. Seven, what did you say, seven of our last eight? Seven of the last nine. 
seven of our last nine, and now we won seven of seven. And the crazy thing about it is every game that we have won uh, of our seven was elimination game. If we lose any of those games in the ACC, we don't go to the NCAA tournament. And then your two teams that get to the Sweet 16, you lose them, you go home. What changed? Uh, we got smarter. Uh, we got the same players who are playing with a little bit more confidence. But when we went back, and I start with the ACC, and we went back and we looked at every team that we lost to, it didn't have a lot to do with them. It was more about what we didn't do, uh, understanding scouting reports. Uh, we had segments in each game where I thought if we played well enough, we would have won the game, but breakdowns and everything else. And so what we talked about going into the ACC tournament and this tournament is let's limit our mistakes and let's stay locked in. And a lot of them was, you know, transition defense, ball screen coverage, things that you could clean up. You know, things that, you know, you don't want to have major league problems where you just can't play. We didn't have that problem because we were good enough to win games. We had problems that you could solve. And honestly, to their credit, um, we grew up in scouting reports and our fin work became better and they understood what we needed to do not to beat ourselves. Okay, again. Boo Corrigan asked at the, after the ACC tournament uh, kind of what he saw in this team, following this team. He, he described it as unwavering. How would you describe this team as, and, and they, they're resolved on the stretch of the season? You know, I haven't had time to really, you know, reflect on what we've done. And because I'm so much in the moment of it. But I was sitting in the bed late last night after watching film. And I was like, man, we just, you know, we won five games in five days against five national champions. And, you know, it, it was weird because we got stronger and better in the, each second half. And we looked like, you know, one of the fresher teams. We looked like we'd had two or three days rest. Uh, I just – this team just believes. Um, the energy is high. Uh, we having fun. We talked about, you know, going to both tournaments, the ACC and this tournament, and having a lot of fun. And we've been able to stay in the moment. And what I mean by that is we never look past the next opponent. And if we're fortunate enough to move on, we are. Um, but, you know, we talked about, you know, being together, trusting. You know, our, our culture is what we call art, A-R-T-T, -T, uh, accountability, relentless, toughness, and doing it together. And any time that, you know, in this stretch where we didn't feel like that we were providing our culture, um, we've talked about that. We've leaned on it. We've leaned in on it. And we've done a good job with it. So I, all of the heavy lifting has to go to those guys because they, they've helped make, made the switch. And, you know, we just pull the right strings. Yep. Hey, let's move on uh, the right side of coach here toward the front. Back to the topic of transfers. Uh, a year ago at this time, you guys were home. You obviously made a lot of transfer moves. How do you feel with the portal being open at this time of year while you're focusing on the game and also trying to deal with that, knowing you have a lot of roster turnover coming? I don't like it now. Uh, and I can't even say how I liked it last year because of the fact that we probably were recruiting. But I will say this. Um, I, I do know that the portal has to open at some point. Um, if I was a new coach taking a job somewhere else, I would love for the portal to be open right now. If I was at home, I would like for it to be open. I'm in the Sweet 16, so I hate that it's open. Um, that being said, I think we have to get small windows. Um, maybe keep it open two or three days out of the week. And, you know, certain days may be closed. But I, I do think it's a little unfair for teams who have worked their butt off to get to a certain point. And they, you know, for me, example, I got no choice. I love the recruiting part of it. But I've got to concentrate on Marquette. But any other time, I've got to get on the phone and try to figure out who can we replace, you know, DJ Horn, DJ Burns, Casey Morsell. And I'm doing it right now. And so I don't like it at this moment. I don't want to sound like a hypocrite, but right now I don't like it. So I wish there is a, a way we can look at it and try to figure out is there another option for that. A reminder to media on Zoom, if you have a question, please use the uh, raise hand feature. Let's go in the back for our next question on the aisle. Hi, Kevin. Adam Teicher from ESPN. What tells you that the team from the last couple of weeks, the one that's won – seven in a row is really who you are and not the team that lost seven of nine ahead of that. Well, I don't think you can do it 
I don't think you can do win seven games in a row in college basketball if that's not your identity. And I think that's what tells us who we are. You know, I go back to it, think about this now. You go into every game knowing that if you lose that you're packing up and your season's over. You know, it's gonna it's probably gonna be a long time since someone, you know, uh, goes in on a Tuesday in the ACC tournament and wins a championship on Saturday. Um, I hope it is because it's a fun experience and hopefully someone else will, will be able to do that. The other part of it is, you know, going into the tournament, we were 11, we were a 10 seed in the ACC. NCAA, we were 11 seed. And if you watch us, we don't play like that. Um, our guys believe we don't look at numbers. Uh, we just believe that, you know, uh, we earned the right to be here. A lot of teams because of um, maybe the net and also they're good teams. They're here, but we had to do it the old-fashioned way. We had to earn it. We had to go through our tournament, and it's almost like you know my days at UNCW. In order for me to go to the tournament, I had to win the the CAA tournament, and we did it. And that was three days in a row. So I go back and look at it. Like to to your to your question is, you just don't accidentally get hot and and win games seven games in a row with the type of teams that you play. I think we've had in that stretch maybe three or four top 25 teams, maybe even top 10, and we responded well. We will stay in the back on the right. Hey, Coach, this is Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. I've got two for you. The first one's quick, uh, but what shoes did you bring to Dallas, and are you <laughs> mixing it up? No, not mixing it up. I got the same shoes that I wore, and um, I got some shiny, some really shiny shoes. It's an honor to referee, so they – they know to give me good calls because we both got shiny shoes on. And um, to the Wall Street Journal, uh, that's pretty good. I saw a, someone send me a, a, um, a picture or a screenshot of DJ Burns on the cover of it, or if it was a cover of the sport, I don't know what it was, but I shout out to you guys for that. Yeah, we, we wrote about DJ uh, not too long ago, but kind of in that vein, that um, one thing I'm curious about is NC State is a proud program with a history of kind of going on these magical runs in the tournament before. And obviously, the 1983 team probably stands out as being one of those teams that's just iconic in March Madness history. So is that something where you've been sort of educating this current team on the history of that? And have any of the players from that year reached out and tried to talk to the guys? No, our, our, our players from 74 and 83 – uh, they have been on campus through my tenure, and including this year. And look, I can't say enough about them and what they pour into our players. You know, they've been in practices. We've honored them, which we should. We should continue to do that. But anytime those guys are around, David Thompson, Monty Tao, um, you know, you know, everybody who's come through, they've done a good job. Even I, I get text messages from you know Sydney Lowe. Thurl Bailey, um, of course, Derek Wittenberg works there. I mean, it's just, I mean, they're so excited about uh, what's happening and they're always sharing their experience about 83 and, um, you know, how great it was and, you know, the magical run. And I think our guys listen to that. I mean, they do. Uh, we try to focus on, you know, being who we are now. It's a little bit different than when they went through, but it's certainly paying off for us. Almost out of time for Coach. Any other questions? I don't think I see it. Okay, last question in the back. Hi, Gary Hahn with the Wolfpack Sports Network. You told me uh, recently that the offensive improvement over the last seven games has to do with caring and sharing. Can you break that down? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, when we – guys like Michael O'Connor has really helped our team you know, it was a pure point guard because what it's completely done is it's allowed everybody else to be themselves. You know, DJ Horn, we need him to score the basketball. Casey Morsell, we need him to score the basketball. DJ um, Burns and, and Mo, And, you know, when we get Michael in there who is, you know, starting to look for his offense a little bit more but more of a pass-first guy, I think that's really helped. DJ Burns has helped. Um, his ability to pass out of double teams I mean, the guy may see more double teams than anybody I ever remember in recent history. And, and people are doing it different ways. They're trapping post to post from guard to guard, I mean, guard to big, and uh, he's finding people. So we have shared the basketball, and we have taken – we went from taking good shots to great shots because of our ability to share the basketball. And I think that's, uh, that's really helped our team. And, you know, when you get into – 
any type of postseason, um, bad shots crush you. And in our situation, we haven't done that. You know, these guys are completely played together, and they really have shared the basketball. So sharing is caring, and caring is sharing too.